this is the first horror book in my entire life that I have had to put down and walk away from because I was so scared. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Okay, this is my emotional support animal. Where was the emotional support? I cannot wait to see what happened. Hello! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And oh, she's like, what is going on? Oh my god, you guys, we are so excited that Christmas is finally here. I'm gonna probably put a cute, aesthetically pleasing intro in before this because we do not want this to be the first thing that y'all see when you click on this video. Right now we're going to be decorating for Christmas. I have no idea what this vlog is going to be other than Christmas. Is this going to be a, a dedicate? I have no idea. I'm just about to put up my Christmas decorations and then I put up my tree. I just got two bottles, not one but two, of my favorite white wine. I'm about to decorate while watching shitty Christmas Hallmark romances and Thrive in my inner Becky. Becky is out in full. Okay, you have no idea how much I love Christmas. I am in my... <laughs> Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer Had a very shiny nose And if you ever saw him You could even say it glows Gotta keep him decorated Gotta keep him decorated all right, we're gonna try this one. It's a movie about a white woman who runs away to Scotland after one of her books sucks and falls in love. Let's go Christmas! Selling author, Sophie Brown! What's up y'all, a little bit of a tree update. So, not the best at stringing lights, but I think we can do better than this. So, I have another light source. It's white, white string lights that I'm gonna add to this, but I like it so far. I wanted to give you guys an update on a castle for Christmas. So, I'm 44 minutes in, and I'm really liking it so far. I love, I love Scottish accents. I think that they're so attractive, and I have a thing for romances with older folks, like, Anybody, especially, not that, that these people are old, they're like in their 50s, you know what I mean? 40s, 50s, whatever. But I just, I love romances with non 30 year old young people. You know what I'm saying? I, I've always been like that. I don't know what it is. It's my inner grandpa, I guess. But I'm really liking it. It's like a grumpy Scottish guy who owns this struggling castle that's at risk of foreclosure. And then this disgraced writer flees to Scotland just to write her next book and she decides she wants to buy the castle and even though he needs her money he's trying to dissuade her even though he needs the money and so he's like okay well you can live here for two weeks until the new year and he's basically trying to make her stay as awful as possible so that she changes her mind about buying the house but of course throughout that they're falling in love and it's pretty good so far i'm really enjoying it so let me show you what the tree looks like so far with the lights off oh oh my god that looks so good that looks so good so the downside about the tree is that a bunch of the lights don't work so I, it looks like in that center space there i'm gonna try and have to put more lights and then I ran out of lights on the top obviously so I'm gonna try and spread these lights out all right back to work All right, it is progress o'clock. We finished the last movie. I think it was, I don't remember what it was called. Would give it like a six. It was exactly what I wanted, just a really cheesy, ridiculous 
romance. Loved it. Now I'm watching the new Scrooge with Luke Evans. It just came out this year. Let's see if we can get you to focus. All right, it's animated, and I just muted it so I could do this clip. But the animation looks really cool. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, you got the moves like Jagger. Okay. Then now this is what the tree looks like so far. Okay. Look at that. Come on. Come on, come on, look at that tree. <laughs> More tinsel is on the way from Amazon and I still have 50 ornaments to put on the tree. But so far, I did put up this ornament that I got in Target and I almost cried when I saw it. Look at her, isn't she perfect? She's gorgeous, look at her little feet. So this is my new favorite ornament and she is just going right towards the top of the tree, you know what I'm saying? And then today I went to get my nails done. I don't like having polish on my fingers, but I did in, because, I did it because that's what Santa Claus wants. Look at these nails, aren't they incredible? I really, really like them. And then this little Santa Claus hat, come on, look how cool that is. I'm on my second glass of wine. Where's Second glass of wine and the decorating continues. Oh, I didn't even show you the rest of what I did. No, and of course I'll show you when everything's light and beautiful. I put up a sign over there. I put up a sign up there. A sleigh rides thing over there. My stocking. And then I did two signs there and there. And my mom's stocking is, you can't see it, but it's basically behind the TV. Then I put this up over here. It's Merry Christmas and it's got a really cute black family. Decorating is going really nice. I ran out of nails, sadly, but I cannot wait to hang this one. I am so excited. I'm gonna put that right over by the TV, right on top of the one down there. So it's just gonna be kind of framing that wall nicely. I'm so excited. And this is going to be today's outfit of the day. What's up y'all? Doing a quick reading update before my French toast comes. I ordered two orders of French toast to satisfy my fetish, thick and fluffy from IHOP. And I'm very, 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 very excited. But before the French toast arrives, we're going to give a reading update on The Hollow Kind. So I started this book not knowing anything about it. I just knew that it was hyped and people were loving it and the publisher sent me a copy. This is from Farrar, Strauss, and Duro. And I'm only on page 60 and you would not believe how many thoughts I already have about this book. The storytelling is amazing. So basically what I've gleaned, again, I just go into my horror books knowing very, very little. But basically what I've gleaned is that this woman is on the run with her child that she kidnapped and she kidnapped him in order to escape his abusive father. And she ends up getting this estate that is passed down to her. But of course the estate is haunted as fuck and all the members of her family that have lived in there, there's a really long history of them just dying mysteriously and in really gruesome ways. And so the book opens up with her arriving at this estate in the middle of the, the night with her son and they're opening doors and just finding very disturbing things like 
dead petrified rats and there's cobwebs everywhere it's just very creepy and what's amazing about this author is that he's really good at setting a scene you really believe in the horror it is definitely like a nice spine tingling read it is fast paced things are already happening it's multi pov and you are jumping back and forth in time so you're following one of their family members from the early 1900s and okay so i can't remember if present day is like 80s or 90s 1989 okay yeah so we are 1989 as of right now which is really cool we do love some 80s horror in this house one of the things that i am finding so intriguing about this book is the writing style at some points the descriptions will be short and choppy and then other points they will be more lyrical and so if you are a reader who likes horror that has really good writing then this is definitely going to be the horror for you it's very very atmospheric and this author has such a talented way with words that's often a critique for horror books um, by different readers is that they want more from the thriller horror writing and if you are one of those readers you are going to really want to read this the chapters are a mix of long and short so honestly i just feel like this book checks a lot of boxes for a lot of people and it's got one of my favorite tropes like a woman on the run creepy ass house like i said it's so amazing and you get perspective of her son max as well i'm really enjoying it the rat scene threw me off i'm not gonna lie there was a creepy cellar not a cellar scene but the scene where the son points at the cellar and is like what's that and nelly our the mother has a flashback and just everything is so creepy already and we're only on page 60. you guys i cannot wait to see what happens next with this book Hello cuties, Jesse is here potentially with pneumonia. Um, this is so embarrassing, but we accidentally like inhaled hot chocolate the wrong way a couple days ago when we were getting our nails done, you know? And like ever since then, we felt like we've had fluid in our chest and it's just been getting worse and worse. And then we woke up today and our throat hurt so bad, like we couldn't talk. So we ordered both pozole and caldo de res and we've just been reading The Hollow Kind and watching Christmas movies. Um, it sucks because we had an interview with Vincent Dorado who wrote um, Burn Down Rise Up today and we missed that. And um, right now we're watching Christmas with You, which is the new Freddie Prince Jr. Christmas movie. He was like our childhood crush, so we're excited. And then right before that, we watched Falling for Christmas, which is the new Lindsay Lohan Christmas movie. And it's like she's got amnesia, and it was, it was really, really cute. But the reason that we're really updating is to share that we are super anxious because Akasha is on a walk with a professional dog walker. We hired someone to walk her for an hour because like I just cold hitting my chest and throat right now like it sounds so painful. It's using this app called WAG and you can track like track their progress and you can see where they've walked and all of that. And so they've done a mile, 1.8 miles and I she's going to come home in the next 10 minutes and I'm like so anxious and excited to see her. I miss her so much. I've been so worried. I'm still reading The Hollow Kind. I haven't gotten very far because I've honestly just been drinking lots of fluids and watching TV mainly. But in the 15 or so more pages that I've read, I'm still really, really loving it. And then today is Sunday, so tomorrow I'm going to try and go to an urgent care clinic and make sure I don't have pneumonia or, like, I don't know if you guys can hear, but like talking, I can hear the fluid. You know what I mean? It's so gross. But I just wanna make sure that I don't, I'm not like actually sick and potentially contagious because in two days I'm getting on a plane and going to New York 
to see my favorite rapper with my best friend. So, fingers fucking crossed. Um, sorry for my appearance, and we will talk soon. Akasha, come here. Did you have fun on your walk? Huh? You don't care? You don't care. Oh, someone's thirsty after a long walk. Hi, Akasha, I missed you. I missed my girl. Yeah, my Christmas girl. Okay, let's get this off. Let's get it off. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> Do you want a treat? Do you want a treat? Do you want a treat? Yeah, you want treats. You want treats. All right, let's go get a treat. All right, sit down. Come on. Sit down. All right, can you go in a circle? Go in a circle. Very good, what a good circle. Can you be fabulous? Fabulous. Good girl. She is dead. I'm so glad she had a good walk. Every time. <sighs> Thank you. Things have changed since we last spoke. It has been about a week, maybe a week and a half since I updated you on this vlog. And I don't even know where to start. I feel like I went to sleep and woke up in someone else's life. Okay, so we're just gonna word vomit. I am going to update you on the hollow kind and I'm gonna let you all know what has been happening in my life, in my personal life, why things are so crazy, why I've been gone for a week, all of that. And apparently now is the time that Akasha must drink her water. Before a, about, let's say about three days, I didn't update y'all because I was having Issues. So first of all, y'all know that I'm loving The Hollow Kind. It has a bunch of tropes that I really enjoy in my horror books. It is beautiful writing. It is just an incredible surprise. I'm listening mainly to the audiobook. The narrator is phenomenal. Like the voice, the tone of voice, the pitch is just really, really fantastic for carrying the story. Now, I had to put this book down. This is the first horror book in my entire life that I have had to put down and walk away from because I was so scared. This book gave me a full blown nightmare. So what happened was I was listening to it and I was just creeped out and my disclaimer, yeah, that's one of the changes. We'll get to that. The disclaimer is that every horror book is going to hit different horror readers differently, right? So when people are like, oh, what's the scariest book you've ever read? I would say The Hollow Kind. That's the scariest book that I've ever read because it has things that, because of my own life experiences and who I am as a person and the things that get under my skin, it speaks to those things. That doesn't mean it's gonna be the scariest book in the world to you. You might read The Hollow Kind and be like, this is a child's play, like what the heck? And normally I am the person, I am always the person actually, who whenever someone recommends a scary book or a scary movie, it's rarely ever actually terrifying to me. Akasha, please. All of that being said, The Hollow Kind is truly the most scary book that I have read. And here's why. The reason is it is a paranormal horror and the type of paranormal horror that it is and just the way that the writing is taking place, it is getting under my skin. Specifically the part about the mom and the son, so taking place in the 80s, 
that part where they are they just moved into this house tensions are high because they're running away from his abusive father and they are slowly realizing that this house is haunted as shit the things that are happening to them are terrifying me the things that they are seeing and experiencing and it's just it's unfolding just like a movie in a very cinematic way. I think that's a part of the reason why horror books don't always get under people's skin is because in order to really scare someone through a horror book, you have to create imagery that is so vivid that the person can clearly see it and experience it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that the author is just nailing creating that vivid experience for the reader and the audiobook is helping a lot too but the physical book is still really creepy because it has illustrations in it and the illustrations are very unsettling all of that being said why am i talking about this i was like okay let me just take a break i, I took several breaks over the course of like a couple days from the book even though i really wanted to read it i just couldn't i was just getting so freaked out so mind you we're on day three i'm like i really want to listen to the book but like as i fall asleep because i love listening to my audiobooks as i fall sleep right and I'm like you know what I'm just getting too freaked out I was walking around my house feeling like something was behind me I was looking over my shoulder I felt all this tension I was just wound up because of this book so I was like okay we're gonna take a third day break from it and just go to bed in the morning in the daylight I will keep reading so I was feeling so anxious that I slept with my weighted blanket and for those of you who don't know weighted blankets often are full of little beads and they're heavy I pull the blanket up tight I fall asleep. I wake up screaming, screaming, because in the middle of the night, the blanket is ripped off me. So I feel the blanket being ripped off and I wake up screaming immediately, just instantly freaking out in hysterics. And I was so upset. I was so afraid and terrified that I didn't recognize my own dog. So Akasha goes jumping onto the bed in my face, trying to figure out what's going on. And I didn't recognize her. I thought she was a monster. I was freaking out, you guys, like freaking out. It took me a while to recognize, okay, this is my emotional support animal. Where was the emotional support? I thought she was a demon. Long story short, I had to take an even longer break from the book because I was that upset. Mind you, my dumb ass finally realized ghost demon didn't rip the blanket off of me it's a weighted blanket it just slipped down off of my shoulders and the the disappearance of that weight made me think that someone ripped it off you know what i mean i was so freaked out and i was shaking off and on throughout the day just because my emotions were so high i've never had this kind of reading experience with a book and if you want to see a video on horror books that i've had a visceral reaction to let me know and we'll we'll see if we can make that happen but yes yeah, so long story short that was why i hadn't updated y'all on the book because i was about to check myself in okay i was just in pieces because of this book right when i was like okay i'm ready to return to reading i'm not feeling as sick anymore oh that was another thing that slowed down my reading was i got sick and i ended up going to the doctor she told me that i didn't have pneumonia which is great she said i just had a regular weird virus wasn't covid so sadly i had to cancel my trip to new york and that means that i was unable to see koji radical he's my favorite rapper and he's rarely in the united states and he was doing a super cheap super intimate show i saw the footage on instagram i was so jealous but i just couldn't live with myself if i got somebody sick and potentially killed someone so i canceled the trip and it was one of the hardest things that i ever had to do and i really really hope that Santa Claus gives me something nice for Christmas because I'm just saying like wow what a good person patting myself on the back did my quarantine I was finally ready enough to read and then I get a call from my mother and my mother tells me hey I'm gonna move in in two days and I'm like I knew that my mom was going to be moving in with me we'd had this talk it's been in the works for a while I was expecting her around December 15th ish and which is the anniversary of my abuelita's death as well as it is currently like December 12th so long story short I was expecting my mother the next week the thing that I told her the one thing I requested from her is I said just give me notice her idea was notice was, uh, was two days so I was like okay 
we're gonna do this, we're going, we're, it's gonna be cool, we're gonna make it work, it's gonna be fine. The other reason I've been MIA is because my mom showed up at midnight with two dogs and a car full of things. Over the course of the last three days, she got here about three days ago, we have been trying to put all our stuff away, getting it organized. It was so packed in here that I could not walk. Filming was impossible. Reading was impossible. Working in all, answering emails, nothing was possible. Over the last three days, she and myself have probably slept a total of like maybe 16 hours. Like we have been running off of fumes. We did a big grocery shopping because we needed all these organizing bins. Like, so I'm gonna put footage in here for y'all to see. I mean, like just look at how insanely packed it was. And we're still actually in the process of getting things done. What you're seeing now is a miracle compared to what it looked like initially when she moved in. This is Mr. Jack. I'm gonna pick you up so you can see. But look! Yeah, so this is one of the changes. And then we have a Nook who is an elderly dog. She is over there in the corner. And Akasha just loves it. So because things have been so chaotic, I haven't been able to walk her and she just got back from a, another professional dog walk. They did an hour, they went for two miles, it was great. And now that things are finally settling down, um, my mom and I still have a few more things to organize. We still have to organize the kitchen and the bathroom. And then we're gonna finish our Christmas decorating. She put the tree in the corner. She was like, yeah, the, where y'all had it looks insane. So she put the tree in the corner and then when we're all done, I'll do like a cute walk through and already the house looks so much better than it did before she moved in. She, you can't see it behind Akasha, but she brought a fireplace, which is super cool. It used to be my abuela's fireplace. My abuelita was cremated, so she's here in the house as well, and we've got an altar for her that we're gonna be putting up. So we're really excited that for her her ascendancy anniversary she's gonna be physically here in the house like that's gonna be fantastic so lots and lots and lots of changes so it is december 12th i have about 22 books on that i have to finish by the end of the year many of them haven't been started my reading is behind schedule i'm behind on my video schedule four or five videos behind i have a sponsorship that i have to get up i haven't written anything on my book this month i am a little bit stressed just a little bit and then I had to reschedule a bunch of my patreon stuff for later in the month because I missed some stuff with my patrons So it's just been wild and chaotic. My patrons are amazing. They're like we totally understand and I'm just Excited so it would long story short. It means I'm going now that things are finally back to a semblance of normal I'm going to be doing a lot, a lot of reading a lot of content catch up all of that so long story short that is why I disappeared for a week. Okay, that is the big update. So, yeah, and I'm complaining because it was stressful, but I'm genuinely so happy that my mom moved in. I think it's gonna be really good for both of us. So now I'm gonna give you a reading update on where I actually am in the hollow kind. Holy freaking cow. So the hollow kind is really interesting because in some ways it's going with a lot of tropes and then other ways it's subverting them. There is a scene where the mom and the son are like, yo, we gotta get up, get, get up out of here. We gotta go. So they leave and I'm like, yes, white people, get out of the haunted house. They go back to the house. And the boy is like, why are we going back to the haunted demonic house? The mom goes, well, you can't just run away from your problems. You actually can. I would be running away. You can run away from this problem quite easily. And for some reason, she felt the need to use termites as an example. She says, if your house is infested with termites, you wouldn't just abandon it. I don't think a demon and a termite infestation are the same thing. I feel like one of these things is not like the other, but that's just me. So they end up going back to the house and that's where I am in the book so far. And 
we still are jumping from the past to the present. So in the past, like one of the things that I love about this past perspective is that it kind of gives Haunting of Hill House. And I'm wondering if this is intentional because the mom's name is Nellie, like Eleanor from Haunting of Hill House. So I don't know if this is intentionally done, but it's really cool because since we're following other members of her family that have been in this haunted household in the 1900s, for example, you get to see you get to understand the ghosts that are now them as ghosts. We get to follow them as living people in the 1900s, and then we get to see them as ghosts in the 1980s. You know what I mean? And it just kind of gives Haunting of Hill House. It's very, very cool because it provides context on the beings that are haunting the house and why and that sort of thing. And we are getting more um, kind of perspective or backstory, etc., on the Thing that is haunting the house. I don't want to spoil anything. I'm just gonna call it a thing or being or demon for now But it's actually much more cool and complex than that. I'm just that's all I'm gonna say though And that is very very interesting. I am really highly 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 obsessed with this book I understand the hype the final thing that I'm going to say I have been dying to continue with this reading experience for almost two weeks now so I'm thrilled. But one of the things that I want to talk about is the fact that Nellie is my favorite type of protagonist. And that is a mom who is fiercely protective of her child. I love mother-son relationships in horror books. Like, I love that mom and son against the world kind of thing. I don't know why, but I just really, really do. And she is just fierce. I love her. Like, she took an ax to someone's car. That's a bad bitch. She's incredible. She's formidable. She reminds me a lot of one of my favorite protagonists of all time, which is Vic McQueen from Nosferatu, which is probably my favorite non-black horror book, and you're going to see me rereading that this month for my um, holiday readathon that I'm going to be doing with McKay and Jade. So anyhow, she's just such an incredible protagonist. I love her relationship with her kid. I love that they talk about what's going on in the house and she's not trying to shield him. She is really treating him like an adult, you know what I mean? Which is one of those irritating things about horror books and horror movies is that people aren't communicating and the mom or the parents are not letting the kid in on the loop and that kind of thing. And it's really cool. You get to follow perspectives of Max, the child as well. Max is a super cool kid. It's just fantastic. I am really, really excited to go back to reading this book. That is what I'm gonna do now. I've got my coffee with my melted marshmallows. I cannot wait to show y'all the finished product for the house. As of right now, I've seen like 13 to 14 Christmas movies <laughs> and Christmas TV shows. So later on in this vlog, I'll probably give a, re a quick review of each and every one of them so excited and if I don't do it in this vlog I'll do it in another but until until later friends we will talk quite soon Our first glass of wine. Now that Miss Mama has moved in, thank God I bought two bottles. Remember earlier on in the vlog, I said I, I got two bottles of wine? We knew there was a reason. Yeah. Adelaide, my love has come home. My lonely. Days are over. Okay, Lush. And life is like. Okay, so for those of you who are wondering what this wine is, it is called Mr. Brightside. It is a Gamay Blanc. Those of you who are wine heads will probably know that Gamays are a red grape. But what's cool about this wine is it went through a process to turn the red grape white. And it creates this really interesting taste. It's so good. It's not even that expensive. I think it's. $20 a bottle. It's my favorite wine in the whole world. That's really tasty. It's good, right? And cold, even better. Oh, yes. Even when it starts to get a little warm, I'll pop it in the freezer, glass and all, for like two minutes. That's really tasty. Mm hmm. What's the matter, baby? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am here, decked out in my nightmare before Christmas sweater. And today is decorating day. I spent the rest of the night kind of rereading 
the Hall kind and annotating my physical copy. And through my reread of what I've already read, obviously, I have come to the conclusion that it is really the audiobook that is creating that mega sphere of fear that I've been experiencing. I'm nowhere near as scared when I read the book physically. Mom is outside with the dogs and we are going to be decorating. I'm pretty excited. We are in the process of putting the mirror that used to be in the living room where the ladder is. So this canvas was previously in its spot. So that's gonna probably live in the bedroom now. We're going to be doing some things around the house and then finishing off with decorating the Christmas tree because the way that it looks right now is just temporary. So we're pretty freaking excited. I have some horror ornaments. I'm calling them ornaments. A little humor there for you. But I'm going to put up and I'm really, really excited to show you them. But without further ado, let's just get decorating. I just muted it because I need them to see how crazy you are. So my mom thinks that this, this is fine. That looks crazy. Let them see you pull it off the wall. It would have been let off them by see now. Oh, now both, it's in here. If you would let me take it no, off no, no. when I said. Shh. Both hands. Come on. Pull it. Oh! <laughs> we'll be back. We're in the process of hanging things up and mom picked out this really cute cafe. What is this called? Serving tray. It's a serving tray for hot cocoa. It says North Pole blend hot cocoa served here. Super cute. And we're trying to figure out where to put it and we were like, you know, it would be a good idea if we just mounted it on the wall with, you know, a couple nails so that way when we want it, we can just pick it up and then it looks like decor during the day. Super cute, right? Wrong. What we ended up doing was taking the sticky tape, the kind that you, the double-sided sticky gorilla tape that you put on the wall when you want nothing to move. Went on autopilot because we've been using this tape all over the house for permit decorations. And instead of using nails, I used the tape on this. I put it on the wall and I'm like, mom, does it look good here? And she's like, yeah. She wasn't even paying attention. So once I put it on the wall and then I start pressing, my mom and I at the same time are like, wait. <laughs> Wait, we were supposed to use nails, not tape. So I started trying to pull it off the wall, and mom's like, No, 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 just leave it. And that's where you all came in. So now you're caught up to speed. Now my mom is saying, She's like, Well, now it's gotta go back on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a hole. Should have just left it. I'm just saying. 
But the, it, it would look... It, it was not that bad. Mom, it would have looked crazy to have this up here in the summer. Why? You don't drink a hot cocoa in the summer? Yeah, but it's clearly a winter decoration. Yeah. And you're clearly a winter decoration kind of person. Just wanted to update and say that we get all of the ornaments. All of the ornaments are on the tree and we're very excited. The last thing that we have to do to this tree is add the ornaments. These are the cute horror ornaments that I ordered from Amazon. And I'm very, very excited. We have Chucky, we've got the Joker, we have Annabelle on the back, we have It, we've got Saw, and we have Michael Myers, and we've got some more, but I'm just so excited. Got our cute Christmas rug and mama bow ties just set up the wreath. Look how cute. The tree. Tell me we didn't do a great job. Look at the ornaments. This is what the tree looks like. Mr. Mike Myers in the house. Mr. Kruger. Mr. Chucky. Mr. Joker. Mr. Jigsaw. Mrs. Annabelle. Mr. Jason, got Mr. Ghostface, Mr. It, Mrs. Nan, another Mr. Joker. Pretty good, right? What's up, Jesse? Coming at y'all from the messy bed bedroom. This is kind of the first peek anyone has ever seen of the bedroom now that it has been redecorated. I'm going to give y'all a final swoop through of the house and show y'all how everything looks, but I'm in the process of doing my December TBR. I know y'all are probably like, Jesse, how are y'all doing a TBR in on the 13th of December. It's just really important to me to get that final TBR out for the end of the year. I didn't end up doing a November TBR because things got crazy and I just wanna do my one final TBR. I absolutely love making them. So before I do that though, cause I'm about to film, I need to unbox my Feminist Book Club package of the month, the final one of the year, because the book that's in the box is one of the books that I'm going to be reading this month for FVC's book club. I missed all of their book club picks this year. So I'm really excited. I was like, I am come hell or high water, I'm going to be doing December with them. And of course, the December book that they picked is by one of my favorite authors of all time. So let me go grab that package and let's get unboxing. Okay, so this is how the package comes. And as usual, they have that really cute handwritten card. This says, Jesse, nothing sparks joy like book mail. And I completely agree. And joy is actually the theme of the December box, which is really exciting. All of their boxes have a theme. So on the 27th of December, which is a Sunday, we are having a discussion, a Q and A with the author of this book. And I'm so excited. Oh my God, this is amazing. So they sent cocoa mint pea pecans, roasted pecans in a seasonal blend of spices and real maple syrup. I've really been craving some nuts. Oh, that's so cute. They sent these fingerless gloves 
from this company called Flip Em the Bird. These are actually really warm. And then there's a nice little bird on it. That's pretty sick. I love that. I'm going to start wearing these underneath my leather gloves that I wear. So for when I'm walking Akasha and I need to have my finger access. This is what it looks like. Look how cute this is. That's freaking adorable. This is the book, the new release from none other than Kelly Barnhill, who wrote The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I'm excited to see Kelly's foray into adult literature. She's actually a local author, which is pretty freaking exciting. So Alex Green is a young girl in the world, in a world much like ours, except... Hi, Akasha. Except for its most seminal event, the mass dragoning of 1955, when hundreds of thousands of ordinary wives and mothers sprouted scales, wings, and talons, and left a trail of fiery destruction in their paths, and took to the skies. That sounds pretty good. I don't really need to read any more of the synopsis because I've said it before and I'll say it again. Books always give too much away on the synopsis. Like when my book comes out, I want there to be a synopsis of two lines. I am really excited about this. There was even a lot of like really subtle feminist commentary in The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Now that I have the book, I'm gonna go back to planning my TBR and we will talk later. Good morning, by the way. I am drinking tea out of my Christmas tree mug. Look how cute this is. Hello cuties, just wanted to pop in and end this vlog. You can probably hear my wonderful mama wrapping Christmas presents in the, ew, why is it wet? Wrapping Christmas presents over in the dining room because we are about to have a Christmas wrapping party. So I'm going to start a whole new vlog and the next vlog that you see me is going to open up with us having a Christmas wrapping party. But I was like, let me end this vlog. As you can see, the house looks phenomenal. It is leagues different than it was when, even before she moved in and then of course when she moved in. So here is the footage of what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. I am so happy with the changes. I'm so happy that she's here, that we've inherited two new dogs. And I'm just really excited about all of the content that y'all are going to see surrounding these amazing creatures and my chaotic new life. So I want to, I want to say, also like we still have not fixed the wall. We're, we'll get to that probably after the holidays. Right. <laughs> so funny. But um, I just want to say that I ended up finishing The Hollow Kind and absolutely it was the audiobook that was making the book so scary for me so I highly recommend the audio if that is something that you're able to use to listen to. The ending was phenomenal. This horror book was absolutely amazing. The body horror and the what's up? Okay. The body horror and the animal horror were really really intense. Um, so if animal horror is a trigger for you, I would I would not read that book. Literally just want to go out and buy all of his books, but I'm going to restrain myself and use the library. So obviously five out of five stars. I'm going to end this vlog here without further delay. I love you. I'm going to end this vlog until next time. Bye.